Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for online betting. From the earliest odds to in game live betting, Bet Online provides you with all the action and the ability to watch the games as they happen. With the largest selection of odds on everything from football, NBA, NHL, entertainment, uh, head to Bet Online today. Remember, guys, we've got a big primetime Monday night football matchup, which we're going to talk about in a moment, but check out the website, get in on the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering, bet online. The game starts here. What's up guys. Welcome to believe in Rams part of the believe network. Aaron Coscarelli back with you. Be sure to do all the things, you know, subscribe, comment, rate, follow this podcast. Uh, we're all over the place and we're taking a look at what you say on social media. We're answering your questions, send all of them. You can also catch us on believe TV and follow us on our, uh, Twitter X Instagram. We're all over the place. Speaking of all over the place, Brian Baldinger is here with us now, I am so excited. You're covering uh, the Tampa game tomorrow, but you took some time out of your studying to meet yes. with us here on Believe in Rams. Uh, Baldy, former offensive lineman, current analyst for NFL Network, and my yeah. former colleague loved when I got to work with you, and I'm so excited uh, to talk to you all things Rams because offensive line has been a big issue for them this yeah. season. But first and foremost, Baldy, how are you? I'm good, Aaron. I'm good. You know, we just crossed the halfway part of the season. I started uh, the year in Brazil for that Eagles mm. uh, Packer game. And I've been working every weekend and breaking down every game every week. So I'm like in a good groove, man. But, you know, like all of us that work in this industry, like we live in seven day life cycle. So I'm ready to start the new one tomorrow, you know, and yeah. get ready for week 10 here. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. It's crazy. We're already week 10. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's been one of the things I actually love and we'll get into it in a moment. You have Baldy, the Baldy breakdown on, uh, on X yes. formerly known as Twitter, which we'll get to in a moment. You guys have to follow him. He's a great follow, follow on, uh, on social media, but yeah, let's talk about the Rams coming off that huge win overtime win against Seattle yep. in Seattle week nine. And here we are, uh, this team at 500. I think a lot of people wrote them off. They were one in four heading into the bye. And, you know, I think here's my first question, because I want to mm -hmm. talk to you about mm -hmm. the game, but, but who are the Rams? Are the Rams the one in four team entering the bye? Or are they now the team we're seeing out of this bye? Well, I think a lot like last year, Aaron, I think they're going to be a second half team. Um, you know, I don't know how long they can continue the win streak. They got a tough opponent. We'll get to it in Miami against Miami. But, um, you know, I think they had to fix the offense line. That thing was broken in training camp. Mm -hmm. All kinds of starters were down. They had to get that fixed like they did last year. No Steve Avila, who's a mm -hmm. big part of their success last year. You lose Puka, you lose Cooper. I mean, you're losing, you know, two trusty wide receivers. You're breaking in all these rookies, young players on your defensive line. You're rebuilding your mm -hmm. state. I mean, it's just a, you know, this team – I think it's going to be a second half team because they're playing a lot of young players right now. Jalen McCullough, Jer you know, Braden Fisk, Jared Verse, like all these young guys. And they just, you know, they're not going to be young forever. Like they're growing up and, you know, obviously a couple of them came up really big last week. So I feel like as long as Sean McVay is there, they're always yeah. going to be a well-coached team, always. And it's it shows up all the time, whether it's protecting – you know, uh, Stafford with a bunch of young guys, whatever it is, they figure out a way. And I give them a lot of credit. Yeah. I mean, when you have Coach McVay in the room, he's going to figure out how to bring and elevate the team regardless of the injuries. But I think, yeah. and I still feel a lot of PTSD with each and every game, even after the bye, when they were playing the Raiders, it was like, oh my God, this is a must win game. And then they and then they play the Vikings. It's like, oh, my God, this is a must-win game. And then, of course, uh, they win a big NFC West playoff implication-type game uh, in Seattle. And I think we're still sort of getting used to the idea of that this team is a winning team uh, for the rest of the season. And I think you mentioned it, you know. I saw it in training camp. I saw, uh, you know, Puka had the uh, had the injury, um, and you haven't really seen those two guys on the field for a significant amount of time. I think they've played what two games so far together for a hundred percent. And yeah, I mean, it's it's 
that the, the thing that I was always saying was in the NFC West, it's sort of anyone's game here because it's yeah. kind of wide open. They were last place last week in the NFC West. They beat Seattle. Now they jumped to two. Arizona is number one. The Niners uh, our third, and then I think the Seahawks are last place. For you, what is the biggest thing you're kind of worried about? And then we'll kind of get into the nuts and bolts. But what is your biggest concern if you pull back and look at the team, big picture, heading into the rest of the season? Because remember, this team didn't have Aaron Donald. Chris Shula uh, gets the DZ nod. And I think there are a lot of question marks re regarding how they drafted. Were those young players key pieces? And I think we're starting to see that sort of develop. But what's your uh, take on what you've seen from the Rams so far? Well, um, I mean, Jared Verse and Braden Fisk were, you know, they dominated up front last week. Uh, mm -hmm. They were they were both really good. I mean, they're just the right DNA. You know, I mean, Les did a good job scouting those kids. They're really they're going to be good players. Um, and, and so is Kobe and, and Byron, like all those guys. I mean, it's a good group. But honestly, my one big concern right now is Kyron, because Kyron's a great back, but mm -hmm. there was no place to run last week. And every time he did get a good run, there was a penalty, they called it back. And so when they got rolling last year, they got rolling because Kyron got rolling. I mean, he led, I mean, Christian McCaffrey led the league in rushing, but he led the league in yards, rushing yards per game, over 100 yards a game. And, you know, he's not there right now. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking at Justin Dietrich and I'm looking at Bo Limmer. I'm looking at these guys inside. And, I, just, you know, they battled really good last week against Leonard Williams and Byron Murphy. So let those guys keep battling. Um, I think they're well coached. So um, I think it's just a matter of time. But when they get Kyron going, I think this thing is going to open up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and they've needed to lean on uh, Kyron this entire season because obviously Cup and uh, Puka were not available. Um, and, they, you know, he sort of carried the torch in the interim. And it's an interesting team. Like, I think that this team is still developing its identity. Of course, I want to get to that in a moment. But let's talk offensive line since you brought it up because that was part of your Baldy breakdown. Uh, you highlighted the Bo Limmer versus uh, Byron. Oh. In, in Seattle, and you and why did that particular play stand out to you? Well, you get a six round pick in there battling against you know a first round pick, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of head to head con you know contests in that thing right there where he's, you know Byron's right on top of him, and he was the first defense to take tackle taken in the draft, and you know I thought Bo not just stood toe to toe with him, but I thought he outplayed him, and so you know you're looking for you're looking matchups you know like if you put him against, uh, you know, Leonard Williams head-to-head. -head. You might not expect a guy like that in his, you know, um, you know, Leonard is his 10th or 11th year, just a salty pro. Like, that might not be a fair matchup. But you go rookie to rookie, and you watch him walk him off the line of scrimmage and battle him one-on-one -on -one and pass protection. I thought I thought he held, held the ground really good. And, like, he's the guy right now. So, you know, it all starts if your center isn't good, if your center is weak, your offense line's not going to be good and your quarterback's going to get hit. And so I, I feel like – like he's steadily improving. I thought Ryan Wendell's done a really good job with these guys, uh, with surmount, you know, all the injuries that they've had. And so I, I give the coaching staff a ton of credit and those the kids that they got in there playing. Dedich is an undrafted kid. You know, he's from your uh, school there at SC. And you know, here he is, you know, like he's he's battling in there. And that, you know, replacing Steve Avila, like that was a hell of a player last year. He played yeah. great for him. He really yeah. was really good in the run game. And so, you know, you lose him early in the year. Um, you know, that's a tough guy to replace. Yeah, Abla and Jonah Jackson, by the way, just some news and notes for you guys listening. Uh, he expected to be elevated off IR for Monday Night Football, according to McVay. And in 2024, Baldi, uh, the Rams have had six different iterations of the offensive line. Can you speak to how the fact that the different – you know, uh, iterations, if you will, how hard that is as a coach and what it says about McVeigh to be able to patch it together. I mean, because if you look at the, the stats, I want to say um, they're the only team to not allow a sack over the past two games. I mean, this is a big uh, jump from what we saw from this team offensively on the line uh, in the beginning of the season. Yep. Uh, man, Sean is uh, like I've studied his protections. And he's just a master. I mean, there's some teams that can – the Chicago Bears can't do what Sean McVay does. They're trying. They have no idea how to do it the way he does, whether it's adding wide receivers into the mix and chipping or motions or like how – I mean, he's protecting these guys. And, you know, he's really he's really adjusted some protections, um, keeping Stafford 
upright and healthy is paramount. He's as tough as they come. He'll take the hits. He'll stay in there, deliver those, um, those, those. I mean, what's missing right now, honestly, is really the deep ball. Obviously, they won the game in overtime to DeMarcus, but that was really the only shot they got down the field last week. And that's a big part of the offense is take their shots. And um, generally, it comes off play action. And those guys got to hold up. And so, you know, you're just looking for that development. You know, and then um, when they got rolling last year, the, the line really, they went to Baltimore. They Like, they took – they really um, improved as the season went on. Kyron did too when he got healthy. And so I, I'm, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for Kyron to get some of these splits in there. He's still running just the same. It's just as hard. His vision's just as good. There just hasn't been quite the, as the number of lanes as he had last year. But I, I believe that that is going to hump. It's going to come. And we might see it tomorrow against Miami, well, although they got some giants inside that you got to move to run the ball in between the tackles. So there's there's a good challenge there tomorrow. Yeah, let's talk we'll about uh, Miami because, um, yeah, this is another big one. They come all the way to the West Coast. Uh, they've got some pretty legit wide receivers there. Tua uh, is back, and he's looking pretty good. What would you say now what you're seeing from this Rams defense? Can you identify what the defense looks like? What is the uh, what is the identity of this defense, in your opinion? Well, Do I we know it yet? It's, it's, uh, I think it's the front. The front mm-hmm. right now is it sort of defines it. Um, the safeties are new, but they're playing good. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, Quentin and Cam. I mean, I always like Cam Curl coming out of Washington. As a rookie, he was an outstanding player, but he's a good hitter. He's a good tackler. Um, to see Cam, you know, Kinchins and McCullough and some of these guys developing and coming on. Um, you know, I think I think it's going to be – they're going to be products of the pass rush. And if the rush looks anything like it did last week against Miami, they're without their right tackle. Austin Jackson who's a pretty good player. Um, that's the backside of Tua. So I would imagine Jared Verse is – Probably going to have, uh, you know, I mean, but Tua gets rid of the ball really quickly, Aaron. Like, he doesn't hold the ball. Um, it's part of the problem right now. I mean, they're scoring 27 points a game with him at quarterback these last two weeks. It isn't enough. But, I mean, he gets rid of the ball probably as quick as anybody. So, tackling these guys in space is going to be the most important thing. Tackling the catch, I'm sure, is being preached over and over again right now. Yeah. Uh, what do you think Chris Shula's um... – Strategy is going to be to contain Tua, in your opinion. Well, it's 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 not unlike what Buffalo just did to him. I mean, the Buffalo sat in a too deep zone and never let the ball go over their head. I mean, that's what I would do. I, w- I would make – I mean, look, uh, Devon Achan is a hell of a back. You're going to see more of Achan than anybody else there tomorrow than Mostert or Jalen Wright. So, um, you know, they want to run the ball. I mean, Mike McDaniel is, is – he's not a genius, but he's very good – at creating uh, matchups to get mm-hmm. the running game going. But I would sit back there in those safeties and I'd sit back there and, I, you know, maybe play your dime look with McCullough in there at linebacker with Rosenboom and just say, okay, run us out of this thing and make us put bigger linebackers on the field. But I, I would not let the ball go over my head. That's what they want. And, mm-hmm. you know, with Waddle and with, um, you know, I mean, they, they just have so much speed out there. You know, one of the things that's really interesting, too, that we're seeing uh, from this defense maturity-wise, since week six, I have a stat for you. The the Rams defense has allowed just 1.57 points per drive, which is the third best uh, across the NFL. But they're also scoring points, which yeah. is really interesting because I remember when I was in training camp and we were kind of um, – we were talking to Sean McVay and it was after uh, it was after practice – uh, you know, obviously the big question mark was always like, how do you feel the void of 99? You can't. Mm-hmm. Um, and he would say, we're going to try to make our offense so explosive. It's going to carry a little bit of the defense. But now you're seeing the defense mm-hmm. actually commit to scoring uh, and getting some points on the board and holding uh, their opponent. So it'll be really interesting if they can keep that trend going with Tua. Do, do how, how do you feel about what's happening with Tua right now? You know, as a professional former professional football player you know, you've seen you've seen the injuries you've sustained them yourself um did you how did you feel with regards to how Tua was navigated do you think he should be playing right now or well I've talked to players about this Aaron and you know sometimes you got to get players out of harm's way make them get out of the way 
Um, I know players, and I've talked to them about concussions, and they said, well, this is what I signed up for. Well, okay, you know, if you're, you know, making, you know, $20 million a year, 10 million, whatever it is, um, mm-hmm. and you're you're 28 years old, you're 30 years old, whatever, um, it's, it's easy to say, I signed up for this. But when you're 50 and you're really struggling, mm-hmm. or if you're 45 and you're really struggling with cognitive disabilities, you can't forecast that. You don't know. I mean, I know players that are 75 and Ron Jaworski is in his 70s. Like he got hit as much as anybody. He's fine. But, you know, everybody's different. And so it's hard to say. We, we don't know about CT until somebody passes and then we can only diagnose it. So I want all players to leave this game healthy mm-hmm. and vibrant and successful. But I also know that some will stay too long and sustain injuries that are really going to bother them later on in life. It's it's hard. It's hard to watch. Uh, I know a lot of my teammates I played with are not in good shape here, Aaron. And yeah. I know we signed up for this, but it's still it, it like I, I I ache when I see it. Yeah, and you know, I mean, the NFL has certainly made uh, a lot of effort to try to make the game safer. But exactly, kind of what you said, you know, you don't know how you will evaluate your life when you're 50, when you're 60. And, you know, if, if, if you were given the contract, uh, a multi-million dollar contract and you're helping, you know, feed your family and, and take care of things and, uh, it, it would be a very hard decision for me to make. That's for sure. Uh, what advice do you give, you know, you're saying you give young men advice. What advice, uh, do you give them? What do you tell them when they're in the middle of a, of a, well, of a seen, season? We've seen players walk away from the game here, just walk away from it, you know, in their mm-hmm. prime or even before they get to the prime. And they, they everybody is free to make that choice. And, you know, I mean, Tua is, you know, he anybody that knows Tua, like he's a better person than he is a player. Like mm-hmm. he's going to be just fine, you know. And so you almost say, look, Tua, like you go back to the islands, he could be, you know, the governor of Hawaii. Like he's – He's revered, but wherever um, yeah. he's got a long life, a long, long life. And he's going to do a lot of probably amazing things in, you know, in communities within his own family. Um, sometimes I would just tell people, look, the earlier you can get started on that, the better. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I mean, not that this has anything to do with it, but I, I played 12 years, Aaron. I could have played a 13th year. I couldn't play, you know, I couldn't pass physical in my 13th year. I was bummed out for a year. And then a year after that, I was so happy I didn't play anymore. I made the, you know, I, I made the cut. I moved on. And I'm so glad because who knows, maybe my 13th year, I would have sustained a really serious injury that would really be debilitating to me right now. I'm lucky. I mean, I'm in pretty good shape. But, um, you know, I would tell anybody, look, at some point, whether you play three years or five or 10 or whatever, like you have to move on. You have to figure out what's next in your life, what that next chapter is. And so if you can do it while you're still healthy, then do it. Yeah, but you've been, you, you, you know, you, double digit. You're one of the most, um, you're one of my favorite interviews because I always say the offensive linemen, they're, they, they're like charismatic. They're the smartest guys. They're, 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 they're a slam dunk for us as media personalities to break down. You guys, you know, you're just, uh, you're just fun. You guys embrace camaraderie and, 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 you're exciting. I mean, obviously, it's why you've been at NFL Network for a hundred years. Um, people love you, and they love what you have to say. How hard was it, though, for you after 12 years? Uh, I know you didn't make the physical, but you know, we look at Tom Brady, who came back because mm-hmm. once you identify as a pro football player, it's sort of hard to give up the the prestige that comes with it. But you didn't have that. Did that not happen for you? Yeah, a little bit, but I mean, I, I, I knew that, you know, I was going to start at the top of the mountain. You know, I had to, you know, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to announce games. Eventually, you know, three years after I finished, I, I was at Fox and doing games on Sunday and NFL Europe games. And, you know, every, like all of us, you know, there's a hundred jobs on the resume that got to where I was going, but I didn't, I didn't have any problem, you know, doing high school football games or working for Merrill Reese in Philadelphia or, you know, any of that mm-hmm. stuff. Like I, you know, I just knew that I needed experience, you know, and so, um, however I could get that, I was willing to do it to build up the skill set, and it kept me close to the game. I'll be on the field, I'll see Christian McCaffrey tomorrow, and I'll see Baker, and you know, I'm still interacting with these guys. 
they watch everything that I do. So I, I've created a culture that I can still feel the game. I don't have to uh, endure any of the pain anymore. So I, I built a good second chapter. Uh, but like I would tell anybody, no matter what you want to do, like the opportunities, because you did play pro football, you're going to have a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do have to get up and kind of be a proactive and get started. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the opportunities for players, I mean, you could go get a degree from Wharton now. You get a degree from mm -hmm. Harvard. You can mm -hmm. come to, you know, our, our broadcast boot camp. I mean, there's, there's so many opportunities right now for active players or retired players. I mean, it's, it's never been better. Yeah. So just take advantage of the opportunities. Yeah. And, and, the, and the, 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 the reason why I love sports so much is it's such a microcosm for real people uh, and, and what they go through, whether you're feeling pressure in, on a football field in front of millions of fans, it's a national primetime game, or you're nervous to go in and, and negotiate a, a higher salary with your boss, you're still feeling the same thing as a human. You're feeling nerves, you're feeling excitement, you're feeling yeah. fearful and using your platform, like how you do to educate, inspire, motivate and teach, you know, you really are one of my favorite people to listen to because I learned so much from you. Um, it's a great, to me, it's a great opportunity to, to use what you you've mm -hmm. done in your life and uh, you know, help and inspire. Mm -hmm. I did, I did have one more question. If Tua sustains one more concussion, do you think he should he should retire? Yeah, I don't know what number it is for him. Um, I, I would I would advise him to. Yeah, I tell him to move on because it's it's uh you know some some look some people tear their ACLs too easily and they you know they tear it mm -hmm. two or three times you know and like it, skiing, soccer, football you know and so you're susceptible and some people go through their whole careers never get a concussion. Never have, like, I might have had one or two, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. two. But, you know, I, I felt like I came through it pretty good. But if, you, if you're if you getting hit and, you know, like, he's got that weird thing that happens. Like, his, his hands start to, mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, they, they get all gnarled up. Like, it doesn't look good at all. And so there's definitely nerve damage in there. Mm -hmm. And so if he gets another one, I would tell him I – mean, you know, for whatever, I mean, I don't, he's not going to listen to me, but like, I, I know there's help out there, but I tell him to, this isn't the end of the world. Playing football isn't the end of the world. It's fun. It's a great way to make a living. We all love it. Uh, we're all feel special because we get to do it, but there's a lot of things that can make you feel special in this world. So I would advise him to, yeah. to hang it up and yeah. move on. Yeah. And I think too, as you, uh, as you increase the numbers of concussion, I, I'm not a doctor by any means, but I think you just, you sustain them easier now, right? So you become more sensitive to it. There's some, there's some compounding damage there, I think, Aaron. You know, yeah, I yeah. Um, Baldy, I love having you on. Uh, how does this game end? Do the Rams pull off a victory uh, at SoFi? I think they do. Um, I, I'm still waiting, honestly, for Tyreek just to get loose because he hasn't. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he's got one touchdown this season. Like, he's too good of a player to like just keep under wraps, whether you're just keeping your safeties over the top, the guy's just too dynamic. And so that, that'd be my concern is Tyreek going out there to LA and putting on a show, you know, in SoFi and Showtime. Like he hasn't done that yet this year at all yet. I think he's healthy and he's dying to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're due, they're due for a really good game. So that says to me, like, can the Ram, because I think they're going to score in the twenties for sure. So can the Rams offense, Stay up with them. You know, last week you watched that game, I don't know, 0-0 zero, zero late in the second quarter, like nobody was scoring. So uh, I think the impetus right now is on the Rams to like, it might be in a shootout type mentality where, you know, your offense has got to keep up with them right now. I feel like this game is going to be played somewhere, you know, in the 50s combined. Yeah. And so, you know, they've had trouble at times, although it's getting a little bit better right now. But, you know, I, I also trust Puka and, and Cooper to come through as well. Yeah. Yeah. You think it's going to be a high scoring affair? I do. I do. Yeah. 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 It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Uh, I love those two coaches going head to head. It'll be, it'll be an interesting matchup. It's a home game. The dolphins have to fly cross country. We know it's not, that's never easy for you guys. Um, and there's still a lot of question marks for me with regards to the consistency and the identity of both teams. So I think it'll be a great test 
Uh, we'll see. The Rams looking to make it four in a row against the Dolphins and Tua. And Baldy, you're so much fun to to talk to. I, I really am so grateful you make time because uh, I know how busy you are. Um, how can people find you on social they media? Can, I know you're. They can go on uh, X or Instagram or YouTube or Threads at Baldy NFL. Um, and they can follow all of my amazing work that I do every day, every week. Aaron. It is amazing, you guys. It is amazing. Baldy is awesome. Um, you're calling the Tampa game. Uh, yeah. You're working the Tampa game tomorrow. Uh, so make sure to check him out and follow yeah. him on all the socials. Baldy, thank you again for doing this. I appreciate it. My, my pleasure, Aaron. It's good to be with you. Good to reconnect. I mean, we have, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of uh, early mornings back in the day, you know, midnight, one o'clock in the morning, whatever time we were up getting ready to do morning shows in LA. Yeah. Yeah. We did a, a show on NFL network called NFL AM and, and my call time was very early because I had, I needed all the time in the room in the makeup chair for my hair uh, and getting ready. And the, the bright spot, certainly at those terribly awful, tiresome yeah. mornings was getting to, to work with people like Brian Baldinger. So that, Thank you. you're the best. Love you. Right. See you soon. All right. All right Aaron. Thank you.